both come backstage at a top London night spot to interview Lee Boardman, who recently appeared opposite Gwyneth Paltrow in the Hollywood adaptation of the Jane Austen novel, Emma. He's in here, in the gentleman's toilets. <laughs> I'm going to surprise him with a few questions. <laughs> I've come here to ask you a few questions about what it was like working opposite Gwyneth Paltrow. I can't say that I've actually seen the movie yet, but I've had really, really good things about you. Can you tell us how you landed the role? Yeah, uh, well, I was down in Iceland in Audenshaw, and, you know, Giz comes up to me and says, you move really well with that trolley. You know, it's fancy doing a bit of moving in the movies. So I said yes. Wow, that's amazing. So this was really your big break, and I suppose the phone hasn't stopped ringing. Um, well, actually, uh, the probably the phone would not have stopped ringing, but actually the phone, in actual fact, has been cut off. Is anybody else in your family in show business? Oh, I, yeah. Um, well, you know, I've, literally, my uncle is a director, funeral director, but, you know, I like to think of him as being, you know, in the business. Right. So how many lines did you have? Lines. Uh, I, I didn't actually have any lines. I was employed as a portly dancer. So what are you saying? That you're a bloody extra? All of us, I'm sure, have at one time or another secretly asked ourselves the question, am I crazy? I know I have. In Pam Ferguson's case, the answer came back a resounding... Yeah! So, Pam, when did you first realize you were crazy? Well, I guess it was when I got to the stage, I had so many people, you know, telling me I was crazy. It was like my word against everybody else's. But what I don't understand is you seem so positive about being crazy. Hey, I don't want to over-romanticize it, but, you know, frankly, going crazy was the best thing that ever happened to me. Since I put reality on a back burner, my days are jam-packed and fun-filled. Like some days I go hang out by Albert Hall. I love to do this dumb joke. I wait for some music-loving tourist to come up past someone. How do I get to Albert Hall? Then I run up and yell, Breakfast! I never could have done stuff like that when I was in my right mind. I'd be scared. People would think I was crazy. When I think of all the fun I missed, I try not to get bitter. What are you most proud of? Oh, my bin bag dress. It protects against rain, sunstroke, and muggers. For some reason, muggers steer clear of people wearing bin bag dresses. Like Prince Charles, you also claim to be able to communicate with plant life. Oh, yeah, Charlie was the reason I moved over here in the first place. We got a lot of mutual friends. I used to talk to plants all the time. Then one day, they started talking back like this guy. Oh, what does he say? He says, Lee, grow up. Yeah, get a friggin' leaf. This is Lee Boardman reporting for The Bottom Line. Things we, we like. like. Metal. Bikes. Birds. Food. Things, Things we, we don't, don't like. like. Generalizations. All people who make generalisations should be shot! Perfectionists! You know, I hate the way people pretend to try and perfectionate. Oh, that's not the right word. Uh, there is a word for it. Oh, it's gone. Um, shut up! Sorry. Sexists! Why is it always men who make sexist comments, eh? We'll fight them balls, all of them! Yes! Racists! You know, I can't believe that there are people who are watching this show who can't even speak English. Yeah, disgusting. Pedantics. I hate... No, I don't hate pedantics. I, I certainly don't like pedantics. Uh, and like the, finally, anarchists should all do what they're bloody well told. That was a public service announcement on behalf of the Therapist Party. We've all got used to the new connotations of words such as gay, lemon, and smorgasbord. Now, there's a new buzzword, rage. You've all heard of road rage, but now there's an even more sinister strand, elevator rage. Are you a victim? 
I'm joined today by Professor Fred Fiddlesticks from Pluckett University to find out more about this worrying epidemic. So, Professor Fiddlesticks, can you tell us how this has developed? Well, elevator age is merely a symptom of a much larger problem, sick building syndrome, or SBS is known. These large buildings are a breeding ground. It's well known for crime. It's, it's a proven fact the Hong Kong skyline is linked with the triads, the New York skyline with the mob, canary walk with elevator rage. Well, I suppose what we all want to know is, is it curable? It is. The Chinese technique known as feng shui can cure it. So, all we need now is a guinea pig. Now, here we have a clear case of the victim of elevator rage. This is Sadie Kay reporting for the bottom line. Yeah, yeah, they am. Uh, oh, my name's Boswell. Um, just come down for the day from Manchester to do a bit of shopping down Regent Street. But first of all, I need to find a bank. Now, uh, I asked a chap down at the Euston Tube where bank was, and he's told me it's here. Um, but there don't seem to be any bank nowhere. I need 14 quid. Bloody southerners. To most men, love is a dirty word. Best avoided, it's comparable to stepping in a dog turd. Women, on the other hand, like to cultivate love. Watch it grow. Stick a spade in every now and again to check the depth. Valentine's Day is therefore the ultimate male test. Failing it will result in tears, tantrums, and no sex for a month. Anyway, don't panic, because I've come today to meet Sherry Amor, who's got a few top tips as to how you men can survive the Valentine's Day challenge. Tip one, don't buy her chocolates. It's way too close to Christmas for that sort of thing. She's bound to be on a diet, which means she'll either feed them to the dog, yeah, or gobble them greedily and then hate you because she's just gained the same four pounds she lost last week, yeah, and her cellulite's complaining of deja vu. Top tip two, <laughs> don't buy her sexy underwear. Well, you can if you want, yeah? I know it's like feeling frisky, want to get risky, but just for God's sake, don't buy her a padded bra. Because, you know, that's read as an insult of extreme proportions, and you'll spend the rest of the year being casually interrogated on which of her friends is the best pair. To which, of course, the sensible response is, uh, Nigel. Top tip three! <laughs> don't take her out for a fancy meal yet yeah, if you're big on complaining in restaurants. I went out for a meal with my boyfriend, um, now ex-boyfriend last year. All through dinner, yeah, he'd be like this. A waiter! Waiter! This is cold! And waiter, yeah, he'd come out to the table and he'd be like this. Excuse me, sir, this is ice cream. Top tip! <laughs> Resist the temptation to impress her with your fabricated knowledge of wines and forget the family French accent while ordering. The French waiter's not French, he grew up in Brixton. And remember, there is no such thing as a bottle of the house witte. That's white, dickhead. Excuse me, Miss, Miss, could, could I have a word with you? It's Sadie Kay from the bottom line. Sadie Kay, funny name for a bloke. You, Miss Vivian, I, I understand you've been exposed as a woman who's been setting fire to hamsters. Is this true? I don't believe this. I don't know where you people get your stories from. I don't know nothing about no arson attacks on hamsters, all right? So are, are you denying allegations? Of course I'm denying the allegations. It's all out of hamswallop, innit? I, I believe the expression's codswallop. All right. One hamster. I set fire to one measly little beady-eyed rodent and suddenly I'm like the woman who sets fire to hamsters. Ah, so you admit it then? Look, it was sick, all right? What was I supposed to do? Take it to the vets? I mean, taking an hamster to the vets, it's like... Well, it's like taking a disposable lighter to the jewellers, isn't it? Ah, so you burned it, Miss Hunter? I cremated it, all right. I, I can't believe all this fuss just because of a couple of hamsters. More than one? Yeah, a couple, two, three, sixty-seven. What's the difference? They breed like rabbits anyway. Rabbits? You burnt rabbits as well? 
it was gonna die anyway. Since I, you know, cut its foot off for good luck and all that. I find this astonishing, Miss Hunter. I really do. Yeah, do you know what I find astonishing, darling? Yeah. That hood. What's this then? Yeah? Well, You're it, no it's saint, not aren't you? It's what not is mine. it? I Tuck borrowed it. it. It's darling, no. that's what they all say. It's not mine. Piss off! Go to any comedy gig in London or watch comedy on the telly and hear the cries around you. What's happened to comedy? Yes, where has all our comedy gone? Well, I have a theory about this. We're in England now. Who do British people laugh at? The Americans. Who do the Americans laugh at? The Canadians. Who do the Canadians laugh at? The French. Who do the French laugh at? Anybody who lives in Southeast Asia. Well, that's when they're not trying to nuke them, of course. And who do the Asians laugh at? the Germans. And that, you see, is the root of our problem because Germans, as we all know, have no sense of humour whatsoever. So that's what's happened to comedy. It's all got sucked up into Germany where it has no chance of escaping. Well, I've come to Trafalgar Square today in the freezing cold to see if I can find anybody who can make me laugh. Excuse me, mate, are you funny? Oh, I think so, yes. All right, then, let's see if you can make me laugh. If you win, you get this. If you don't, you get something else. <laughs> Grapes, very droll. Is that comedy? I don't think so. Is this comedy? That'll do for me. This is Sadie Kay reporting from the bottom step at the bottom line. Questions we want answered. How come the word dyslexia is so difficult to spell? How come there are three T's in stutter? Why is the word abbreviation so flaming long? And, and whose, whose bright idea was it to stick, stick an, an S, S in lit? That was a public service announcement on behalf of the Therapist Party. Those two blokes there are dealers. Crackheads they are not, however. Crackers they most certainly are. Yes, these are comedy dealers. And fresh out of college, young wannabe stand-up comics are their prey. To investigate further, I've gone undercover as a trainee dealer. So everything's hip-hop happening and groovy. <laughs> Why don't you just shut up, sweetheart, and blend in with the background, all right? I'm here to meet Wayne Bunn, a man who was married on the brink of collapse due to his failure to see his wife in anything other than footballing terms. Now, your wife, Carol, says that your sex life has taken a real hammering due to you exclaiming at the crucial moment she thinks it's all over. It is now. Carol Bunn must understand that the best time to equalise is on the stroke of half time, not late into the second half. She's got to hold out for the full three points and not just settle for a draw. Well, maybe having a child would bring you closer together, Wayne. If she does decide to have a child, I'll certainly have to sell it a dummy. Thank you, Wayne. This is Lee Boardman reporting for The Bottom Line. And I have discovered that, yes, you can get something for nothing in London today. You can get dirty. You can get cold. You can get injured. Ow, uh, uh. So there you have it. Something for nothing in London today. When do I get paid for this? Oh, sorry, I forgot. You can get free extras. Stage and screen stars Robson and Jerome are on the street with Sadie Kay. Did she actually get them this time? I'm here today to meet Robson and Jerome. Yes, the dynamic duo should be arriving any time now. Oh, don't do that, Jim. You know everyone will start to look. What are you doing? Oh, we're queuing. Why? I'm not going anywhere. You shouldn't take your career too seriously. Oh, stop moaning, Maureen. The queue's not going to go any faster, is it? 
this is not a queue. I am just standing here by myself, quietly minding my own business. No, no, it's none of our business while you're queuing. Don't get clever with me. You started it. No, I didn't. Oh, uh, yes, you did. No, I didn't. Started what? The queue. This is not a queue. How many times do I have to say it? We shouldn't get so worked up about it. You've got to realise it's part of our culture. We British love to queue. What if I wasn't here? But you are here. Yes, but what if I wasn't? Well, we would have got on that bus. What bus? That one that stood left. So why didn't you? Well, first come, first serve. And you didn't get on. I wasn't waiting for the bloody bus. Why didn't you tell us? Because I didn't know that's what you were doing. So you're not curing then? No. We better find another queue, Jim. Yeah. What about that geezer there? Let's ask him what he's waiting for. Excuse me, mate. Can we queue behind you? Right, really are you waiting for anything? Sorry. What, what, what are you want to Are you Where are you queuing for the bus as well? Like, I'd like to know. You're queuing here. Come on. Hang about, mate. Thank you, Sadie. Because I'm happy. Clap along if you feel like.